What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. For anyone that is new here, hello, my name is Garrett. I invite you to hit the subscribe button down below. Join the family on the journey to 100,000 subscribers. And if you guys can do me a huge favor, smash the thumbs up button. We're really trying to reach that goal of 100K. And you guys, by simply just smashing the thumbs up button, takes two seconds, boom, really helps the channel grow and it really pushes this video out there. So. Without further ado, let's talk about today's topic, which is airline pilot commuting and what this really entails. This has been a highly, highly requested video, and today we're gonna dive right into it. So to start off this video, I'm gonna talk about my own personal experience commuting. I know there are so many people out there that have spent their entire life commuting. I don't know how they do it, but they have. I know like my father, for instance, he commuted for over 10 years, which is insane. Now, a lot of companies do work with you. They do have something in their pilot contract called the commuter clause. I know my company personally does. If you can't get to your base within two flights, meaning you listed for two individual flights, you can be dropped from that trip with no pay, but you're not penalized like you can be fired or whatnot. So there are definitely clauses in a lot of pilot contracts on each individual company. Of course, you need to do your due diligence and your research and make sure that you know what that commuting clause is at that potential airline you wanna work for before you go and work for them or before you decide, hey, I'm gonna be a commuter for my life. So let's back up. When I first got hired at the airlines, I was based in Philadelphia and I was living down in Charlotte. Now that's a hub to hub for the company that I work for. So for me, that was a very busy flight. There are always commuters because hub to hub, there's always, you know, whether there's flight attendants or pilots going back and forth. And then also Philadelphia and Charlotte, that's a pretty big traffic for passengers. So for me, it was pretty tough. I found myself on the jump seat a whole lot of the time, which at four or five o'clock in the morning can be really miserable. Or on the flip side of that, when you get done with the trip and you're riding home after a 10, 12 hour day, riding in a jump seat straight upright, it's not very comfortable, but at the end of the day, you're very, very fortunate to get home at the end of your trip. So for me, I was commuting up to Philadelphia. So what did that mean when I was going out on a four day trip? Let's say my report time is 2 p.m. up in Philadelphia. Well, there's two flights before 2 p.m. that get me there for my report time, legal report time. So let's say the first flight is at 8 a.m. and the next flight is at 11 a.m. I have to take that 8 a.m. flight because in my commuter clause, I have to have a backup flight for me to get there legally. So I now am supposed to start work at 2 p.m., but I'm actually starting work at 8 a.m. Well, that's what time the flight takes off. All right, well, we need to back up even further than that. Let's say I live an hour from the airport, which I'm fortunate to only live about 15, 20 minutes away. But if I live an hour, you gotta be at the airport an hour prior, right? So I'm there at 7 a.m. I gotta leave my house at six. I'm waking up at five. Hopefully I packed and everything the night before. And if I'm not starting work until two, I'm waking up at five and you could be getting done at 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. So now that is a very, very, very long day just to start your four day trip. So you really gotta think about this. And that, that's a pretty you know, logical standpoint of you know, a 2 p.m. check-in time, which is very nice. Imagine if you had an even earlier check-in time, which we'll talk about right now. Let's say my check-in time is at 8 a.m. tomorrow in Philadelphia. Well, I can't get there with two flights before 8 a.m. So what do I have to do? I have to leave today. So what does that mean? That takes time away from my, my family, being at home, getting stuff done around the house. And that's basically taking a day off away from me. Let's say I only had two days off between trips. Well, now I only have one day off because I'm commuting up to Philadelphia the day prior because I can't get there with two flights prior at 8 a.m. tomorrow. So I'm spending the night in Philadelphia. Now, some companies do have commuter hotel rooms, which they are working with you a lot of the time, but they only give you one or two a month at most companies. And for me, as a commuter at the time, I was burning those up really quickly. So now, hotel rooms are coming out of my back pocket. So anywhere from 50 to $100 a night is what you're spending for a cheap, cheap hotel. And that's coming out of your pocket. So not only are you taking away from a day off, you're taking away from time at home, time with family, but now you're paying out of pocket to commute. So I know this is very negative on the commuting side, but I just, this is my personal experience of what I actually had to endure as a commuter, especially when I was doing 11 or 12 days off and you only have two days between trips. 
I was really, really affecting my quality of life and just time at home with friends and family. So think about that on the front side of commuting. Now I know a lot of people who maybe are based up in Philadelphia that live three, four hours away. A lot of those people drive because they don't want to get stuck trying to you know fly in the day prior or maybe even fly in the day of a flight cancels and now you can't get to work on time and you're jeopardizing your career potentially and on the flip side of that of getting home on the back end of your trip so that's what we're going to talk about next but before we talk about the back end of a trip i do want to give a shout out to our sponsor Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of different classes on so many different topics. Something I personally use Skillshare for is figuring out how to edit YouTube videos. I was so bad at it before and I had no idea what I was doing until I finally found Skillshare. This was something I really struggled with. I couldn't figure out how to, you know, get around the platform of Adobe Premiere Pro. And then a friend told me about Skillshare and one of my favorite classes from a creator named Jordy. Jordy really goes into detail on everything from the basics to videos, to video effects, to transitions, to how to even properly export videos, which I was not doing correctly. So I personally use Adobe Premiere Pro and there are so many classes on just Adobe Premiere Pro alone. With all the extra time at home right now, Skillshare is a perfect platform for you to learn something new and have fun while doing it. And right now, Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 of my subscribers to use a link in the description to give you a free trial for a premium subscription for you to explore any of your hobbies that you've been dreaming about recently. Go check out Skillshare. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Now let's talk about the backside of the trip. Let's say I get done at 8 p.m., okay? And there is one more flight to get me home from Philadelphia to Charlotte, which like I said, I'm speaking from personal experience. This happened to me time after time after time. I would get, I would get done at 8 p.m. There's one more flight, maybe at nine, and it's full. And then there's already two jump seaters on there. So now I'm stuck in Philadelphia on the back end of a trip. What does that mean? Less time away from family, less time away from friends, less time away from just being home, which we all love being home, especially as airline pilots when we're gone, you know, over half the month when we are home, that is our sacred time. We love to be home and spend time with friends and family. So that's more money out of your pocket and that's also less days off now. So your two days off now just turned to one on the backside as well. So I know this is coming off very negative, but I just really want to portray an honest image of what I experienced. Now, not everyone experiences this at all, I promise you. Now, a lot of people have an amazing commuting career, but me personally, I value my time at home and commuting definitely takes away from it. Let's say you get there the day, the day of, that's still, you know, you're getting up at 5 a.m., you're leaving your house at six, you don't have to work at two, that's half a day if you lived in base where you could spend at home doing so many things like today. In fact, I am filming this video on Sunday and I actually am reporting at the airport in two hours from now. But if I was commuting and I had to go up to Philadelphia today, I wouldn't have been able to film this video. So I'm very fortunate to have my base. If you guys want to learn more about how to not commute and how to live in base, let me know in the comments down below about how you actually get bases. Does an airline pick them? Do you have to bid for them? I'd love to go more in depth about it. And if you guys really are intrigued with aviation and it's a passion of yours and you want to grow your aviation knowledge and you want to explore and network within the aviation community, consider checking out Flight Circle. It'll also be linked in the description below. It's an aviation community I've developed and we're already having so much fun just in the first week. That'll give you that one-on-one -on -one experience so you can talk to me personally. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please, please, please smash the thumbs up button. I'll give you two more seconds. Okay, cool. Make sure you subscribe and until next time, peace.